Hello guys, welcome back. Um, in this video I will be talking about a concept called um, paging. So this is the video that I that I have promised to talk about um, when I started the video of how computers work. So basically this is the video that will be dedicated to explain how the memory is managed. So um, and up like just like up until now every time this that I have talked about reading and writing memory was a little bit like I'm gonna say fake like for example when I said like the CPU is going to use for example the RAM and he is going like for example to read and write directly actually this was a little a little bit fake yeah so for example L files that we have talked about in the previous video um, specify like specific memory addresses to load data into so why aren't like there problems with different processes trying to use conflicting memory that's a good question to ask um, and why does each process seem to have a different memory environment so also how exactly did we get here and like we understand the exact VE that it's a syscall that replaces the current process with a new program but this does not explain how multiple processes can be started like it definitely does not explain how the very first program runs so we are just like nearing the end of this series of theoretical videos um, and after these two questions most like we answer these two questions like we will have a mostly complete understanding of how your computer got like from a boot up to running the software you are using right now to watch the video so the first thing as I said is that the memory um, explanation that I did in the first video was pretty basic and was pretty fake so about this memory so it turns out that when the CPU reads or for example or writes from memory addresses it's not actually just referring to the location in the RAM like directly um, by that it means it's not actually just referring to the location in physical memory which is the RAM rather I think it's just pointing to a location in a virtual memory space so the CPU is actually talking to a chip called the MMU which is the MMU which is the memory management unit so what the processor is going to do and I remember just watching that um, on the first video or the second video of the live overflow videos um, and he, where he talks about the MMUs or just, I, I remember it was like a literal like snapshot like in my mind I was just having that flashback when I just heard about the memory management unit for the first time from live overflows videos yeah so the MMU guys is the thing that works like a translator with a dictionary that translates locations like in virtual memory just to locations in RAM and when the CPU is given an instruction to read from memory address for example I don't know he wants to read for example 0x 2c 3f uh, 2d uh, I don't know 1 1 it's actually it's actually asking the memory management unit which is this one it's actually giving that address to the memory the, to the memory management unit to look at up like in an, a dictionary just to discover that the matching physical address for this one for example it is like I don't know 0x 3c etc 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 so this is called a virtual address for example and this is a physical address so there are two kinds of addresses which are virtual um, and physical so this is what basically the memory management unit main job is so its main job is to convert from the virtual address to the physical address and then returns the result to the CPU so that he can read um, or write from that address in RAM so uh, the first thing that happens when your computer so first boots up is that the memory accesses go directly to physical RAM 
and he immediately just after startup um, like the operating system creates the transition um, dictionary just and tells the CPU to start using the memory management unit so the dictionary guys is actually called a page a page table yeah so to map the virtual addresses with their physical addresses the memory management unit uses something called page table so a page table is a kind of dictionary and this system of translating every memory access is called paging so entries in the page table guys entries in the page table um, so entries in the ta in the page table are called pages and I think each one represents how a certain um, chunk of virtual memory maps to RAM so these chunks are always a fixed size and each processor architecture has a different page size also so for example in the 8664 it has a default for kilobyte of, uh, of of a page size what does that mean so that means that the size of the page so that means that the size of the page um, the size of the page uh, sorry about that okay size of the page is 4 kilobyte what does that mean so that means that the size of the page will be equals to 4 multiplied by 2 to the power of um, of 10 2 2 to the power of um, 10 yeah so that means that it will be multiplied by that which is bytes so this is just a little bit conversion so this is a little um, conversion from kilobytes to bytes yeah so what is next um, so this is basically the size of the page um, so meaning that each page specifies the mapping for a block of memory into that amount of bytes so in other words with four kilobytes uh, pages of pages we have like um, exactly we have um, 2 to the power of 12 addresses so to represent to represent um, such a number of pages such a number of pages um, we will be needing we need um, 12 bits just to represent just to rip present the offset of the address so for example if the processor is using 32-bit architecture that means that that means that the address for example the address will be written and will be written in um, in 32-bit so we will be having so we will be having like um, so we will be having like 12 for the offset 12 bits so the lowest actually so we'll be having the lowest um, 12 bits um, so we'll be having the lowest 12 bits of the address to the offset and we will be having like 32 minus um, 12 which is equals to 28 for the number of the page for the number of the page yeah so this is like basically what is happening so the 12 bits uh, are for the address which we which will be actually always the same also for the uh, physical address so it's actually like having like a place where you will be dealing like you have a virtual addresses or a virtual space and you will be having a physical space 
And the physical space is basically RAM. Um, physical space, which is RAM. So each address, for example, 0x, I don't know, 2, 3, should, for example, 4, 5, should be mapped to a physical address, which is 0x, 3, 4, 5, for example, 6. And the bridge to do that, and the, the one responsible for the conversion is the memory management unit that uses something called a page table that actually maps those two addresses so this is basically like what is happening so for example when we take for example um 0x22 for example um 22443313 um uh, I don't know, 5, just 54 for example. Um, this is a 32 bit address. This is a 32 bit address. So basically, the offset, since the offset is just taking 12 year, is taking 12 bits, then, so since it's taking 12 bits, it will be actually, the offset will be like 0x, um, the lowest 12 bits are these ones which are 4 0 4 5 54 yeah so this is the offset so this is the offset in the page and the other 28 bits are the number um, are the are the number of the page itself so this is basically the the number of the page yeah so this is the number of the page yeah so this is mainly what is happening so the same offset will be in the physical space but the um, the number or the number of the of the exact uh, place in the physical space will will not be the same and I will be talking about that later on so just uh, um, for now all what you need to, uh, to remember that the address will be divided into two one for the number of the page the other will be the offset in that page yeah so the page table actually guys resides in RAM so while it contains like millions of entries each entry size is only on the order of a couple bytes so the page table doesn't take up too much space so to enable paging for example at boot the kernel I think um, first thing is just to construct that page table in the RAM um, then it stores the physical address um, of the start of the page table in registers called uh, in the register sorry called I think um, the is it just the PTBR? I don't, I don't remember that. <laughs> is it PTBR? Um, CPU? Sorry. Yeah, it's the page table base register. So yeah, so it will be just saving that value in that register. So finally, the kernel will be enabling paging. So this is a kind of internal just um, a register in for the CPU, just like the the CPL, the current privilege level that we have talked about when we talked about the security rings, um, it's kind of the same. So it's kind of special for the CPU just to know where is the page table exactly. So finally, the kernel just enables paging to translate all memory access with the memory management unit. So for example, on the 8664, the top 20 bits of controlled registers like uh, of the control register 3 for example which is the CR3 um, CR3 CR3 CPU um, the control register which is actually just functioning as the PTBR I think so for example the bit 31 of the CR0 which is the control register 0 is designated for paging for example if it is set to 1 it's going to tell the 
the processor or the CPU, okay, we are using paging. If it is set to zero, then it's like saying to the processor, hey, we are not using paging now. So the magic of the paging system is that the page table can be edited just while the computer is running. So this is how each process can have its own isolated like memory space when the operating system switches like context from one process to another. And I think an important just task is um, to remap the virtual memory space to a different area in the physical um, memory. Let's just say you have, for example, two processes. Um, I don't know, for example, a process. Uh, e okay, let's, let me just um, refresh the page. Okay, let's just say we have a new board. Um, okay, let's just say you have two processes process A and process B. Uh, process B, yeah. So both the processes want to access, for example, the address 0x042. Actually, both of these two um, addresses will be um, forwarded to the memory management unit, which is the MMU, and the MMU will actually um, make each request to its, um, its mapped physical address and the map physical address for example if for example if this is the data which is for example the RAM um, this is for example can be the data the data can be for example um, I don't know 0x234 which is the um, converted physical address and this could be for example 0x 3456 um, for example so this is like pretty much like um, what is really happening when we try to do like any kind of um, any kind of uh, conversions from virtual addresses to um, to physical addresses yeah so like this two processes can even be instances of the same program I don't know for example because they aren't actually fighting over that address which is the zero for example 424 because um, they aren't actually fighting over it, well, like fighting over the that address range. So the data for a process A is somewhere far, like from process B in physical memory, um, and is mapped like to that address. So this is why, for example, the memory management unit is so important because such a thing will make parallelism or making as can do something called multitasking as in the previous video that I have talked about so this will make each process has its own address space and there is there will be no conflict when talking about addresses so from a security perspective um, I think the process of isolations should be enabled by the memory paging because it improves the code um, and I think it also creates a level of security because processes cannot access memory um, from other processes, obviously. Um, this is like half the answers that we have started with. Like, if you remember the questions that we have asked in the first video, like, this is like half the answer of the original questions that we have started. If you don't remember the question that we have asked in the first video, um, it is like if a program like runs directly on the CPU and the CPU can directly access RAM, why can't code like access memory, for example, from other processes or just, for example, for example, the kernel forbid that? Do you remember that? I don't know if you remember that or not, but it feels like we have mentioned that question. So I think we should go to the kernel and just investigate a little about what the kernel is doing just to understand this. So what about the kernel memory, guys? What do you think about that? So I think the first thing that we should just look up to, and I think I have researched that very well, is that 
The kernel obviously needs to store plenty of data of its own like to keep track of all the processes running and even like the page table itself every time a hardware interrupt, software interrupt, I don't know, a system call is triggered and the CPU enters kernel mode, I don't know, for example, the kernel code needs, for example, um, to have access to, um, to the memory somehow, so Linux solution was actually really amazing. So the Linux solution is to always allocate the top half of the virtual memory space to the kernel. So Linux is called um, is called a higher half kernel. Like you could just look at that. It's, it's so fascinating. It's the higher um, half kernel. That's actually really interesting. You can just Google that if you want. There's a whole article about it, and it's really, really, really interesting. So you could, sh you should just check that out. It's because it's amazing. Yeah. So basically, Windows employs, I think, a similar technique. While the Mac operating system is actually a boom. <laughs> actually, I tried to read a little by the Mac operating system too. Like in the articles, I have just run around the internet but Mac operating system was too much complicated for me since, <laughs> since I'm not that expert at operating systems but okay it was a kind of kind of good uh, exploration there yeah so it would be terrible just for security um, if user land processes just could read or write kernel memory so that's why paging will be enabling a second layer of security which is would be letting that each would be saying like okay each page must specify the permissions and flags um, when flags like for example determines whether the region is writable or only readable another flag for example is the CPU that only kernel mode for example is allowed to access the region of memory this for example later flag is used to protect the entire higher half kernel space so the entire kernel memory space is actually available in the virtual memory mapping I think so for example th that kernel space should be able should be available for the user land programs actually so they just don't have the permission to have access to it so for example I just figured out something really really interesting which is that the page table itself is actually contained within the kernel memory space so when a timer chip triggers for example a hardware interrupt for a process just to switch for example to from user mode to kernel mode the CPU switches the privilege level to kernel mode and jumps to Linux kernel code being in the kernel mode which is actually the ring zero that we have talked about um, allows the processor um, to access the kernel protected memory region which is the kernel then can write to a page table of a memory just to remap the lower half of virtual memory for the new process and when the kernel switches for example to a new process and the CPU enters user mode it can no longer access any of the kernel memory so that explains a lot of what is happening with the page Table. So when, for example, in here, when the process A wants to access this, for example, address, the, mem the memory management table, actually, or the kernel specifically, go to the page table and switch it from mapping this address to this. And when, for example, the process B also wanted to, um, wanted to um, access this address, it actually the kernel goes back to the page table and edited that address for him so that's why so the fact that the kernel or the computer is doing that so fast so that two addresses is are not conflicting with each other is really really interesting I think <laughs> yeah so just about every memory access like goes through the memory management through, through this little guy here which is the memory management unit interrupt descriptors table handlers or handler pointers that we have talked about also these addresses are actually used by the kernel virtual memory space as well so that was like 
pretty much like okay interesting stuff to know but one thing is just to mention too that I want to talk about which is like the swapping and demand like Beijing is actually really interesting so for example um, a memory access might fail for example for a couple of reasons uh, I don't know for example and the address might just be out of range it might not be mapped by the table page for example when you when you, for example, just try to type, for example, I don't know, int x um, 21 in your code. For example, and you try to, for example, I don't know, printf, uh, printf uh, x of, let's say, just 25. You are not allowed to do that, actually, because, um, because of the fact that you cannot do that so easily because it's not allowed for you or the user space program is not allowed to do that so that's why for example the kernel is throwing back to you segmentation fault so well I will be back just a little just to talk more about this little fact about the where the fact that memory access can fail to somehow grab an address or um, or, or write an address for example so it might not be mapped for example by the page table also so for example when the memory management unit is not having any kind of entry for the specific virtual address that um, the application is trying to convert to a physical address um, that's also gonna be a problem so it might also have an entry that's marked as not present for example it's not available so if any so of these cases the uh, so if any of these cases happen um, the memory the memory management unit um, would try to trigger for example a hardware interrupt called a page fault so to let the kernel handle the problems so the memory management unit will say to the kernel hey I, I have a page fault it's up to you to find the solution to that so the kernel should have the solution to such a thing so in some cases just to read was the red for example was truly invalid or prohibited for example so in these cases the kernel will probably just try to terminate for example when you try as I mentioned here for example you try to read um, an address or something that it's not in your address space so basically you will be thrown just a segmentation fault which is a pretty 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 like famous error that most of the dev most of the developers are having so just an aside just take fault um, fact that I've just tried to research a little so segmentation faults actually means just different things in different contexts so for example the memory management units um, can trigger a hardware interrupt called a segmentation fault um, but when memory is read without just permission for example uh, that's also called a segmentation fault but segmentation fault is also the name of a signal the operating system can send to running programs to terminate them due to any illegal memory access so segmentation fault is fully related to memory access so in other cases for example memory ca memory access um, this can intentionally fail allowing the operating system just to populate the memory just and then hand control back to the CPU just to try again so for example the operating system can map a file on a disk just to virtual memory what does that mean that means that the operating system can map that file on the on just on a virtual just memory just without actually loading without actually loading it into RAM and then load it into physical memory and when the address for example is requested and the page fault occurs this is called demand paging just a little example that you can just have in your daily life for example you are trying to open up open up a game for example and there is a loading phase actually the loading phase when you are trying to that you are seeing actually when running the game the loading game is actually kind of a demand paging for example when the game wants for example let's say you are playing a football game for example PS or FIFA or so, let's say you are playing FIFA so for example when you play FIFA um, when you try to grab for example the map or the I don't know um, 
the stadium that you want to play in um, actually the stadium is an image or something or some data in a file so basically when you try to um, start a game the stadium needs to be loaded so that's why for example this process needs to load that file but that file actually was already mapped to the virtual memory address space but it's not loaded into the RAM it's not loaded like um, into a physical addresses or something like that so this is basically what demand paging is so for example um, this will allow syscalls like the memory map which is a pretty famous function that I've been always seeing like in the majority of a lot of challenges in reverse engineering um, that lazily map I think entire files just trying to map files from disk to virtual memory to exist so for example you can just read about the memory map if you want you can just check out the memory map the Linux mail manual page you can just check it out so the memory map creates a new mapping into the virtual address space of the calling process. So the starting address for the new mapping is specified in the address and the length argument specifies the length of the mapping which must be greater than zero. So basically memory map is a pretty famous function um, that can help you uh, map what's in the disk to the virtual memory uh, that you have. So for example just a lot of stuff that was happening you can just read about it just to see how this memory map is working exactly so for example um, when you execute a program at its libraries the kernel doesn't actually load anything into memory it's actually creating a memory map of the file and when the CPU tries to execute the code, the page is actually like immediately false and the kernel replaces the page with a real block of memory. So that's the trick that the CPU and the operating system are doing together. And this is actually the demand paging in detail. So I can repeat that for you if you if you just don't <laughs> didn't hear it, but when you execute a program in your computer and that program is actually using libraries um, the kernel doesn't actually load anything into the memory um, but it's actually creating a memory map of the file and when the CPU tries to execute the code for example let's say an instruction the page immediately falls it's like saying to the kernel hey I'm having a page fault and the kernel should find a way to solve that problem so it, repl it, it replaces the page with a real block of memory so this is what demand paging is so demand paging can also just enable the technique that you're probably seeing under the name of swapping or swap or paging or whatever they call it so this swapping or paging is a pretty famous one so operating systems can free up physical memory by just writing memory pages to disk i think and just try to remove uh, just try to remove them from physical memory but giving them just like um in virtual memory with the present flag set to zero means it's not using the paging so if the, if that virtual memory is read the operating system now can restore the memory from the disk to the RAM and set the present flag back to 1. So the operating system may have, like, I don't know, um, is, may have, to, for example, to swap a different sections of RAM to make space for the memory. So, for example, let's say you have a huge, like, amount of RAM. For example, let's say you have 1 gigabyte of RAM. When you use that amount from let's say for example you have some data in here and you have for example your disk in here so basically your computer is just getting data from the disk to the RAM and so on it's like swapping and going from RAM to disk and RAM to disk just to make your processes running without any kind of problems that's why you can keep on using for example your computer just slowly without 
any kind of problem. So yeah, this is like pretty much what is happening. Um, like if that virtual memory, for example, is red, don't forget that it's going to be using or that is going, for example, when you try to go to get this data from the RAM to the disk, the CPU needs to switch a value in its uh, internal registers to one, which is for the paging. And if it's going to go, for example, um, from the I'm sorry, it's, I think it's the opposite. Yeah, he, if he is going to get data from the disk into the RAM, then he needs to uh, set the value of the paging registers internally in the CPU to 1, otherwise he is going to set it to 0, and so on. So, I think the operating system may have to swap like different sections of RAM just to make space for the memory, as I said, just to make the RAM not fully loaded with... <laughs> <laughs> obviously with processes and with the with a lot of that's why we have to use the disk so the disk reads and writes are pretty slow I think compared to um, compared to the RAM so that's why mm, the maturity of the operating systems try to make swapping I think happen as little as possible like with um, I don't know with efficient for example page replacements. I think we have learned that in college I think we call them just um, efficient replacement uh, efficient replacement algorithms uh, algorithm pages efficient replacement algorithms you can just read about them it's just, it's just the way um, of how your computer is placing the pages and making them go from the RAM to the disk and so on so this is pretty much what is happening when you are when we are talking about um, paging and memory management so one thing to remember is that there is something called a virtual address and there is something called the virtual um, a physical address and there is um, something called memory management unit that is the one responsible for converting from virtual addresses to physical addresses and there is something called swapping which is the fact that sometimes he is actually just using the memory map to map files to disks or to map files to the virtual address space and then he is on and then actually when the application or the program is needing some specific data he actually starts just loading that um, this data from the virtual um, from the virtual address space to the RAM and the function that is responsible for mapping the files to the virtual address space is called the memory map so yeah I think that's pretty much what I wanted to explain from a perspective of theory and a lot of stuff I have talked about we have seen like in college but the professors weren't good enough to explain them for us so that's why I had to go alone and research that on my own I have to thank two people just who make me learn a lot and a lot just by reading and watching their videos one of them is Liveflow shout out to Liveflow for his videos and the other one is called actually it's a girl called Lexi Maddox so Lexi Maddox is actually having a lot of articles and I have read a lot of what she is writing and doing and actually I know I learned just learned a lot from what she's doing out there yeah so I think we have hit the end of oh yeah I forgot there is another book you should also just check out which is the practical um, reverse engineering which is a pretty interesting book too you should just read if you haven't read that book maybe it's time to read it just it has a lot of information that is really really useful especially when trying to dive more into the reverse engineering world yeah so I think in the next video we'll be doing a crash course on assembly language we just like fire up try to learn some assembly language together and then it might be just time to dive with all the tools and knowledge we have to try to reverse engineer binaries and softwares and programs yeah so I think we have hit the end of the video if you have any kind of questions again don't be shy just to ask the questions in the comments below 
and don't forget to subscribe and bye